Welcome guys to the behind the scenes of the In The Light short film which was actually filmed a long time ago last year October or September-ish time, late September which it was basically a horror film that was meant to come out for the you know Halloween and all that you know just one of those short films to celebrate sort of things and all that which is weird because it's Halloween and you know people don't really like celebrating but you know what I'm saying and that film was created a long time ago we never released it because I actually wanted to put it on the Vendown Films website, which never ended up being made. We might make it sometime soon, but I have a full pack and everything, which is why I actually really badly wanted to make a website, because I want to basically make... You can watch it on YouTube, which is compressed quality, but then you can get it on the website, which is full quality, full behind the scenes, and it just looks way better. So that was basically my plan, and that's why it didn't end up getting released. But we have it released now, and you might notice in the behind the scenes of this, which is going to come up now, which is from onset, you might notice that my voice is like a little bit more squeaky and all those sort of things, and I was also kind of more hype and all that, but the reason was because it was a long time ago and all that, sort of, not, yeah, you can argue the point, but that's basically why, and it was basically just another short film, it was made with the Canon EL60D, which I'm actually recording with now, which, if the footage does, does look a little bit soft, sorry about that, I am shooting at a very low aperture, and I didn't have any, like, you know, focus person or anything. So, you know, I kind of just put a lamp light here and then try to focus. So, just a quick little warning, just in case if anything does happen. But I just want to quickly point out a few things just before the film does end. We didn't cover the editing process. But I will say that we did edit it with Premiere Pro CC. And basically, it's just the standard. We cut it and all that, you know. The title was created also in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Because all we had to do was just go to the title tab, just add it. Very, very basic, not any complex things that really happened in the short form. No crazy VFX. Although we did add a ton of grain. And by ton, I mean a ton of grain over it. Reason being because I wanted to make the image look a little broken. Although I think I may have taken it to the next level. Because I added way too much grain. When I look at it now, I realize that it was pretty stupid adding so much grain. But yeah, other than that, we added the aspect ratio bars, which was 2.35 to 1, because I like that. 2.40 to 1 looked a little extreme on this, because there was a lot of head shopping and all that. 2.35 to 1, I know it sounds like it wouldn't change anything, but honestly, just a little bit cutting over the head, honestly, going to annoy me, which is actually sort of happening right now. I like it being like this, but, you know, it ended up being like that, so I just wanted to make it rather 2.35 to 1, getting way too deep into an aspect ratio, but... You get what I'm saying? And basically, other than that, the only other things we did was color grading, which, honestly, this film didn't get color graded too much. We did move around things on set to make sure that it wouldn't be colorful, which I also talk about in the behind the scenes, because there's a lot of colorful aspects, and in a horror film, you really want to move those out of the shot, because if there's a big, bright green thing, like, you know, a big, bright green box, so, for some reason, over there, then... If you want to make it a very low saturation, grainy film and all that, then that's going to be there and it's just going to like pop out and then no one's going to focus on the subject. They're going to focus on that amazingly bright green box. So you want to move those things out. Of course, in post-production, there is ways to deal with that, such as you can change the color and then you can maybe make it a little bit less and all that. You can make it actually white or black or something. Of course, if it's a bright green box, you rather want to maybe go with the light white and all those little things because... Black would make it look way harder. It would be way too much effort to be able to do that because, you know, black still has shiny reflections and all that. If it's white, you know, you can get around it easier. I'm getting way into depth with this. But I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes. There wasn't too much that I covered, although there is sound design at the end, so definitely stay tuned for that. Which we actually used the Rode Smart Lab for, not the Smart Lab Plus, just the original one because we only had the Smart Lab then. Of course, now I'm busy using the Smart Lab Plus, which. It's an amazing microphone in my opinion, very much, very much love it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. The rest of it's basically being filmed in the behind the scenes, which we did fake blood, which the fake blood I didn't necessarily cover. I showed how to make it, but I didn't show like, you know, what we did and all those sort of things. The fake blood was actually just for the plate, but at the end of the day, we also did a few extra shots, which never ended up getting in the film because I thought it was just random. Like there was one shot where the, there was like face blood and all those sort of things which I didn't think it fitted in with the short form I wanted it to be more like a simplistic storyline and that would have gone way off course of that storyline that I wanted to make so I rather just took those two shots out of them not really anything crazy that went in them but 
that's basically it for the intro for the behind the scenes. I hope you guys do enjoy the short form still. Um, it was a long time ago, so don't judge too much. We are going to be making way more short forms for Venn Down Films, so definitely stay tuned for that. But I'll end the video with the same shot soon, so definitely stay tuned for that. And definitely wait for the sound design at the end. I think it was pretty random of how I did the smart, uh, of how I recorded sound effects with the smart lab. So if you want to know how I did that, wait till the end. But yeah, so see you guys at the end in a sense, you know, this shot. But I hope you guys enjoyed the behind the scenes. And yeah. Hey guys, welcome to the production of the behind the scenes. I was just finished um, doing the whole moving around because as you can see, everything is a lot less colorful, which just of that in itself has meaning because the whole film is not meant to be like colorful. It's supposed to be dark, deep, torn apart and all those things that you people may like. Um, so we were just like moving things around, making things a lot less colorful because this place is pretty colorful, you know. So we were just moving it around, making it way more horror film pleasing, if you may. And... This is gonna hopefully be pretty good. We're actually above schedule right now. We were supposed to start at 10.45. No, I mean 7.45. But we ended up moving it just a little later. Just so we can get everything finalized. But no, we're above schedule. So, I'm making this vlog just before we're about to start. I'm using the app Shot Lister, which I'll go through more in a little later. But so far, everything's going good. We haven't started shooting yet. We're gonna start shooting pretty soon. But that is just another thing that I'm just gonna quickly update about. Everything will be more in detail a little down the line. But Shadness, that we planned out everything, and I really like the program because I mean, everything a lot like you know, the shots with the tripod I made later, and the shots with the handheld. Which, by the way, this is our handheld rig. We made it a few days ago. It's it's basically like those cages that you get, which is very nice because now we have a lot more steady footage and handheld. And we usually just shot with a tripod, but now we're shooting handheld so we can get more of a organic, practical feel to the film instead of making it all in post so that we make the film better at the end of the day. So there'll be more of this stuff later. At the moment, we're gonna just finish off setting up everything and then we will record and get the film done. The camera we are recording with, the Canon EOS 60D, with the little rig, woohoo, and a glass of water. By the way guys, just saying, you're probably not going to hear the behind the scenes, this machine is pretty loud, so sorry about that, but we already did a shot, it was a cool sexy close up, as you can see we have a light there, that light is just a lamp that my dad got, it's an LED lamp, it's actually pretty bright, let me actually show it to you. It is. And it has a bendy leg and everything. And look at how good the footage can look. And it gives that sort of a greenish, like, you know, low CRI um, color rendition index. It gives a low tone. So it gives a kind of grainy look. So it really matches the horror. And this is a horror film. So this will be very helpful. Hey guys, that was day one of our shooting thing. We were actually only going to shoot for day one. It was going to be scheduled for about... 2 hours, 25 minutes, around about that long, but we stumbled across a little problem. And by the way, just in case you want to know, this is a 70 to 85 f4 to 5.6 Canon lens. reason why we changed lenses is because we are still shooting with the 50mm. It's just a 50mm on a crop sensor. This is a 1.6x crop. Makes a 50mm an 85mm because it crops it by 1.6 times. So, the, we ended up using this lens for a few of the wider shots, like a super low angle, and it's completely wide. It made everything a lot easier. And the problem that we stumbled across was this DIY rig, we can't get the camera off. And my dad is in a different country, so we can't like get him to come here and just take it off, like he usually does. And we have some tripod shots, so we can't just have, and it's not necessarily tripod shots like, oh, you can just film it like this. We actually need the tripod. Like, if you watched the second episode of Film Shift, then you would see how to make a DIY dolly move in post-production. We're doing dolly moves in post-production in this um, episode, in this film as well. So we kind of have to use the um, tripod or else it looks like a documentary style where the person zooms out with the shakiness. And we don't want that because that ruins the whole cinematic vibe if you got that with that film. Hopefully you did. So that was day one though. Um, 
we were only going to shoot for one day, as I said, but we also have a shot list, and this shot list helped us a lot. It made us stay on time. If you don't know the app, it is Shot Lister. It is available on iPhone. I don't know if it's available on Android, I don't think it is. But if you have an iPhone, you can pick it up on the App Store for, I think it's $13 or something. I think it is that much. And trust me, this app is worth every penny. I know lots of people say that, but this app really helped us. It made us stay on time. And really, when it comes to a film, if you're going to do a shot list and you're doing it on paper, truly you're wasting your time. If you do the storyboard and you're one of those people that does storyboards, that is fine. But in my opinion, I work better and quicker with a shot list. And this app is very good. And you, Ryan Conley talks about it. A whole bunch of people talk about it. So definitely check this app out. Definitely worth your money. And other than today, we also had to do a continuity check because we weren't planning for another day. But since we are doing another day, I had to check what clothes I'm wearing, where all the furniture is positioned. Because we had to move furniture because everything was just so colorful, as I said in the beginning. Um, everything was too colorful in this house. So we had to move some of the colorful things away to make more of a horror vibe. And we just had to go around the whole place checking to make sure that we're not gonna have like a random thing there for the next film shoot and it's a continue it's just for the continuity and other than that everything was good as I said we're using a, a lamp light an LED lamp light and we're also using my uh, my Amaron it's an FN 160L or something like that I forgot exactly the name um, but this light is really good very bright very nice. It's Aperture and Amor Amoran. Amoran, Amoran, oh no, no. Um, other than that, today's day of shooting was very nice. Um, we had some pretty good shots. Um, we had to do a few takes. And it's just to wrap this part up, um, the thing is that some of the takes, like, we. I have another person that is holding the camera and the thing is that that person, by the way that's my sister, thanks a lot to her, but um, she's not a filmmaker or anything, she like isn't part of that industry, but she was helping me on the shoot and the thing is that you can't just give a camera to one of your friends and say okay just hold the camera and let me do the thing, they need to be a little more experienced. But I couldn't ha have that happening in the shoot, so I just like, you know, gave her a little introduction and she caught along. So that is how that happened. If you are filming with a sibling and they're holding the camera, just keep that in mind. And we're going to have a few more production vlogs with the, um, tomorrow with the tripod shots. But other than that, thanks a lot for watching this production vlog. Hey guys, so now we're busy doing the continuity check because we were filming on Friday and what went wrong was the handheld rig that we custom made to mount a camera onto our tripod, it's a ghetto tripod and you need to use this quick release plate. The thing is that you, don't, you can't buy the mounting for the quick release plate so we couldn't put another version on the mount. So we had to unscrew it and then we had to put this thing on. But the problem was with that was we now struggled to get the camera off of the quick release plate. So we couldn't do any of the tripod shots. Of course they're not going to end up being tripod shots because when it comes to a horror film, you don't necessarily want a whole bunch of like, like the static plane shots because it makes a very boring horror film. With a horror film, there is two main types of movement. Handheld, which gives off a feeling like the character is busy like being shaken around in the world that he's in and a slider which can basically it's like if you watch a movie and it starts dollying out you start going closer towards the screen it basically has that sort of effect and it does and with the slider it's used like you can look at look at all your favorite horror films and you'll see there's a whole bunch of slider shots mainly because of this like makes you move with the film which is very, very important. So we're not going to have tripod shots that are just laying there. They're going to be filmed on the tripod and then in post-production we're going to have dollying out and dollying in. And to put it in simpler terms, we're going to be putting it in After Effects and we're basically just going to zoom in and out in post-production. 
But since now we couldn't do any of the tripod shots, now we're busy doing that today. But we are busy doing the continuity check. Reason being because we moved things around, mainly because it was really colorful. Like these colors, these very, very bright orange colors, they wouldn't come on camera as nicely as you could see them in real life, if that makes sense. So we had to move them, and plus for a horror film, you don't really want bright, vibrant colors. You want to have a very dark, unsaturated tone in your whole image. So that is very important to move things around and just like to make sure that it's uncomfortable as possible unless you want it to be different, which if you are, go for that, but we want this to be a traditional type of horror film, this short. So that is the continuity check. So for the continuity, last time, which was Friday that we were filming, we actually took a video of the whole place that we were filming. We just took one long shot of the whole place and the whole like environment just so we can see where we moved everything so there's not just a random thing standing there and you're like that wasn't there before just to make it look way better than it is and this is a very good like cheap little hack that you can use if you want to do continuity because taking pictures can be quite a frustration although the the one tip that we did not follow too much is with the continuity, follow your actor a lot. Like, just make sure that the clothing is exact. Because I have two pairs of white pants, and I don't know now which pair I'm, I'm supposed to wear for today. So I'm gonna have to look at that even more carefully. But these problems always come on set. Hey guys, okay, so now we're busy changing our lenses, of course, doesn't look too pleasing. But we're busy using a hundred millimeter. It's gonna be a face shot. It's where he like he has a face like whoa, what just happened and all that. But the reason why we're using the hundred millimeter far and not the fifty millimeter close is because it's gonna add a shallower depth of field behind him. But not just that. It's because it can convey a different emotion. Of course, I don't want to like say everything just now, like right now. But it's also to do with like you know. You don't want the whole world to be in with him. He's like, he doesn't have anywhere to go because it makes the whole background seem way further to, further away from him. So it feels very far apart from everything. So you can say a word in just changing a simple lens, which is always very important. Hey guys, okay, so now we're busy making some fake blood. Reason is because there's two shots that require blood. It's the anti play thingy that has the whole blood drop and all that. You can make whatever you mean of that. And also the last shot where, with the gun and all that. I think it would have, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we're busy making fake blood. What we're using is corn syrup and three food colorings. We're using blue, yellow, and red if you did not see by the colors already. And it's not gonna be like a whole cooking lesson, but basically the method of making fake blood, wow, I haven't used this in a while, it's pretty, Stuck on there. Um, you take your corn syrup. I know corn syrup isn't available in all the, all of the world. You mainly get it in America and Europe. But if you can find it, definitely use it to your advantage. If you don't have um, corn syrup and they don't sell it near you, you can go for you can go for corn starch. But it's gonna be a cooking method instead of just mixing. So, it's going to take a little more effort, but it kind of has the same principle. You mix it in and then you boil it, basically. And now all we're doing is, we are going to just mix some red in. Whoops. <laughs> just a little bit. Some yellow. And the yellow can actually make some sort of and the yellow can actually make some sort of a bloodish color. The yellow is actually probably one of your biggest bets. And the blue, you don't want to add too much of that, that's for sure. That just darkens everything up because blood isn't like you don't want to make it those crap movie sort of blood because that makes it very unrealistic. You want to have it very dark. And 
fake blood is made. Of course it may have a purplish texture, then you must just work on adding a little bit more <laughs> of the yellow because the yellow is, is caused by the red stuff and now you'll be good with blood. So now hopefully this helped you. Hey guys, so with the plate scene, that's a little bit of a big thing. I swear I saw a spider in there and I am not a spider person. And that thing is freaking scary. No one has ever touched it. I don't even know what it's there for. And this is all the equipment that we used on set. The Canon 60D, the 17 to 85 f4 to 5.6, Canon 50mm f1.8 Mark II, 100mm f2.8 non L lens, aka non L lens, just to say, um, some fake blood, an LED light. This is an Amaron 160. It's, yeah, I think it's a 160. A basic little lamp, very, very handy, especially for this horror time. Very much recommend it. Shot Lister, the app. Which, let's do it, and we're done with the entire shoot. And we used the Giddo tripod, and other than that we used of course corn syrup and food coloring, but yeah, we don't really need to cover that hopefully. Hey guys, okay, so welcome to day three. This is the sound design part. And the reason why we're doing sound design is because, as you'll notice, you hear a knocking in the film. Such as in the scene in the laundry, he goes, You can clearly hear it. And it sounds stupid if a sound that you can obviously, like, see that it would be heard very loud. You can't just cut those sounds out of the film. So we're coming back just to make the sounds because. We didn't have the microphone on set because I would because there's no dialogue in the film. So we're gonna rather do this afterwards. And we can't use the on-camera microphone because the on-camera microphone is not gonna be good enough for this. So we basically made our own boom pole sort of like rig, if you could say. This is the Rode Smart Lab, and basically what we did is we actually took an arrow. And because we don't have anything, there's no real boom pole for a smart lab, for a lavalier mic. So we just took an arrow and we took one of the wings and we attached it there. And now, you basically can just put it very near it without holding it or anything. Making it sound way more clear. So now all we need to do is just record the knocking sounds. There's two versions of it. One at the beginning of the form where you don't see any knocking so there's no syncing. But we can do that as much as we want. But we also have a phone here. And just to see the recording so I can see how many knocks there are and like how pitch like you know of course there's a difference between whacking and tapping so we're just going to like film those sounds and then the sound design because there's no real big sounds in this so then the sound design will be done and then we can move on to whatever comes next all right guys so that has been the video the behind the scenes of the in the light short film Honestly, there were many aspects that I didn't like about the film, such as how grainy it ended up being, how low contrast, and the grain actually broke the image, because you will notice in Hollywood they actually add film grain as a form of sharpening the image, and I wanted to do that, but I also wanted to break the image, and of course, if you add so much sharpening, if you were to go into any editor, basically, and just add tons of sharpening to your footage, you'll notice the image just starts to fall apart, and if you add so much grain, that's the exact same, and it fell apart too much. If you know, Hollywood horror films, they add a lot of grain, but they don't add so much that it falls apart, and they also have ways of making sure that the image doesn't fall apart. And I'm pretty sure if a Hollywood color corrector or a Hollywood editor were to see how much grain I added, they would be very disappointed. So grain, I was definitely not too proud of how much I added, although. The lighting, it was fairly basic, we used the lamp light, which this is actually this one right here, quickly go and reach it real quick, it's this one right here, this is a basic lamp light, as you'll notice the lighting quality right now looks very sort of smooth, we have a full light coming in here, and we have a backlight coming in there, 
And now if I add this, you'll notice it has a sort of a greenish sort of a tone to it. You'll notice so. Yeah, in my opinion, it's a great light for horror films. It adds that sort of a noisy image, although I definitely recommend if you're going to make a horror film, don't make it as noisy as I did or as grainy and all that. Honestly, I'm cringing when I watch it just because of that. But other than that, not much too much, not too much else. There was a little bit of craziness with that spider. This was a big ass spider, like no joke. Yeah, so also just quick warning again. Voice was different then, so don't judge and all that. But there will be more short films coming in at Venda on Vendan Films. And editing we didn't cover, pre-production we did cover, sort of. The only pre-production that was used was the Shutterless app, which I used on my phone. But now, I got an iPad to also use it for, so that's going to be way more nice. Because, as you guys know, looking at all the shots you have to do on a small little screen, it's way harder than a big screen. So that's definitely going to be in my phone, like a tool bag. In a lot of cases. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the short forms. We have way better gear now as well to use for certain things. So, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And the road reel will also be coming out very soon. If it's not about the time you're watching this video, which it probably should be. And, yeah, if that's basically it, guys. Editing, basic, basic and all that. I said it in the video. Just cutting and editing. Very basic color correction. Just desaturating the image and all that. Honestly, not much else to it. But that's basically it guys, as you'll notice, we have the thumbnail of it in the background, which the thumbnail was very simplistic and all that, just that shot, which in my opinion, that was actually my favorite shot by far out of the whole piece, just that dollying in and the dollying out, in my opinion, definitely gave a great emotion, in my opinion, that's probably the thing I'm most proud of from the short film, but tell me what was your favorite shot, if you have a favorite shot and all that. But other than that, guys, there'll be more films coming out at Vendam Films with more behind the scenes because I really love the behind the scenes. That's actually way better than the films, usually, in my opinion. So, yeah, because um, if I watch a Hollywood film and I don't like it, usually I'll look at the behind the scenes and I'll say, that should have actually been in the theater rather. So, that's basically it, guys. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to get off topic and all that by talking about Hollywood films now and all that. But that was basically it, guys. Nice short film, sort of, filmed last year in October, and I'm sorry for not releasing it then. It just didn't happen with the website and all that, but I will, of course, be uploading it now, because it's uploaded now. So, other than that, guys, if you enjoyed this video, comment, rate, and subscribe, and until next time, guys, in the next video.